checking in for this week's Weather Extra, we're going to focus on what's making headlines this week. And the headlines have kind of been overwhelming. And just look at the two images over my shoulder. We're finding ourselves in a time of year now, and it's not just this year, it was last year too, where as a nation we're confronting simultaneous high impact disasters on either end of the country. We know our side of that story with the wildfires. And on the same day when we're doing our best to keep up with the headlines on how big the wildfires are, how bad the smoke is, on the other side of the country there's a disaster which is just as bad if not worse happening at the same time. Both of these are being intensified by climate change. And there's ample evidence now for both. First, let's set the stage. I want to talk to you about hurricanes. I'll switch over to the weather computer, and I want you to see the climatology for hurricane season. When does it happen? And when do we hit the peak? And if you take a look, there are dates going across the top. You can see the red shows you hurricanes and tropical storms. The yellow just shows you hurricanes. The bottom line is that the trend is the same. September 10th is when we typically reach the peak of hurricane season. We're getting real close to that, and the headlines already look like it. And if you want to line this up, when is fire season here in California? That has been a moving target. But in general, September is going to be the heart of it. We've already had quite a run with fires, but we really haven't even gotten to the offshore wind season yet. And we all really need to stay on guard for that because things could get more active in different parts of the state as we do that. So there's the timing. Both of these line up. A quick review here on hurricanes. Because Ida did something that was astounding. And there are going to be a lot of headlines to deal with in terms of Ida when we start looking at the aftermath of the results on the ground and on people's lives. One of the things that might get lost in the headlines is how astoundingly fast Ida intensified right before it came on shore. If you go back 24 hours before Ida made landfall on Sunday, Ida was a Category 1, just 24 hours before landfall. That means it had sustained winds in the eye at 85 miles an hour. When it came on shore, 24 hours later, the winds had intensified to 150, a 65 mile an hour jump in just 24 hours. That's technically termed rapid intensification. There was a study done at MIT that said for uh, hurricanes to be able to do that, if you just took the climate as it was through the 20th century, a hurricane would be able to go through rapid intensification like that maybe once every century. We'd be talking about one like that. Ida just did it this week. That same study from MIT said, if we don't curb our carbon emissions, by the time we get to 2100 at the end of this century, we could see hurricanes go through rapid intensification like this before landfall once every five to 10 years. That's a startling statistic and one that the headlines from today are important to take note of in terms of what we know about how a warming climate is altering hurricanes. It's not changing the number of hurricanes or tropical storms, but it is increasing the percentage of the hurricanes that get into the really destructive category, category three or higher. So we're seeing more strong hurricanes. We're seeing less in the weaker category. The number's not changing overall. So it's not like climate change is making more hurricanes. What climate change is doing is it's taking the hurricanes that are developing regardless and intensifying them more. It's making them stronger and it's making them intensify more rapidly. That's the fingerprint for climate change when it comes to one of these disasters. For the other disaster, we know also well here at home, the change in fire weather. And we could look at that any number of ways, and we've done a lot of that with you here on Weather Extra and in our forecast on KPIX5. Here's one takeaway. The deep shades of red on there show you areas of California or the West in general where the number of fire weather days has increased, in some cases doubled, the number of days throughout the year where we're seeing fire weather. That's the jump from the later part of the 19th century to today. So we know the conditions are increasing for fire weather because the fuels are so much drier, the temperatures are so much higher. One of the other consequences, even if you're not directed by the fire's impact it directly, is the smoke. And we've had to come up with new terminology for this and new ways of categorizing it. This is what I find interesting. Smoke wave days. Here's one study that was done in 2018 that said the number of smoke wave, smoke wave days, meaning the number of days where the air quality where you live registers are at least moderate. If you can do that two days in a row, they consider that a smoke wave. We've gone way past that. We've had many more days than that. That shows how fast the science is adjusting. This was an assessment of that back in 2018. I don't even have the 2021 numbers now. We're going to have to revisit this. 
let's go back to the first image. And the reason why we're going to have to revisit this is because California's looking like that a lot more now than it ever did in the 20th century. And that is a clear uh, consequence of climate change as well. And this is the time of year now where our attention kind of gets drawn from one side to the other. But understandably, here at home, we're pretty focused on the issue at hand for us while also watching the headlines in the news nationally. And that's something um, that tends to converge this time of year. Okay, that's this edition of Weather Extra. Paul Hagen will be in next week with another one.